I suppose I should have told you this earlier, but I'm a very private person. I think I'm putting it on video because I'd like to just explain it once and not a bunch to a lot of people. Here we go. Back in 1991, nobody knew what was going on with me. Uh, I was starting to get arthritic joints and stiff, and my eyes were getting blood in them, my nose, my lungs, and I couldn't move after a while. It got worse. Nobody could figure it out. I was hospitalized. Eventually, 30 days straight, seven of those were on a respirator, a ventilator in ICU. Turns out I have a very rare disease called Wegener's granulomatosis. Once they knew about that, they gave me very high-dose steroids and a uh, breast cancer drug at the time called Cytoxin, uh, which takes about eight weeks to ten weeks to start kicking in, um, and it saved my life. The prednisone on very high doses, back then it was 80 to 120 milligrams a day, um, saved my life. It really saved my life. And I've had about seven or eight of these episodes since 1991. And uh, each time the disease seems to sort of sneak in faster, but each time we sort of get it faster. So after the second or third time, I didn't need to be hospitalized. I could recognize the signs when they start coming on. Uh, so that usually gives me a couple years of, hey, things are okay. Uh, this time around, it happened about eight months ago, but instead of lasting one and a half, two, three years remission, it came back after two months. Did it really ever go away? I don't know. But the medication protocol that they've done the last 10 years or so, which is a six-hour IV of a cancer drug called rituxin, as well as the prednisone, I don't know, didn't seem to work or work as long because it, you know, the eight month mark, here I am again, back on some high dose steroids. Uh, but this time, my whole shift in my mind has changed because it really tells me, well, geez, what if after all these years the medication is not working or the disease is trying to outthink the whole process? Because just when we make another um, step forward in treatment every year or two in terms of trying to almost prevent this to come back, regular scheduled infusion. Drugs is, I mean, the, the disease is trying to sneak in faster. I think of myself as a person, and then there's my body that has the disease. And that's really how I've survived it. I really detach from that. I get a, a somewhat of a uh, healthy form of denial going, because to think about, oh God, this can come back anytime and shut your whole body down is, is not great. Well, now we've upped it to another step where, where I don't really have the luxury of going, oh, so I should then go on this treatment and we should be good. The more immunosuppressives you give, the more chance it goes into remission, the more chance the risk of having something go on with those immunosuppressive drugs as a problem is there. So you got to balance those out. The doctors have to balance it out. I go to Cleveland Clinic. I have a local doctor here. They're all in conjunction with each other, Cleveland Clinic. It's the top of the line vasculitis people in the country. Back in 91, 92, five year survival rate was 50%, 10 year survival rate another 50%. Go 12, 15 years in the future, you, there's a 3% chance that you were gonna live. So here I am at the 24 year mark um, and happy to be living and surviving. And I think it's because I've really kept check on treating it really aggressively when I know it's coming up and um, I describe it as, in Star Wars, you know, there's that Empire Strikes Back, back, that minefield that they're going through, but they have to go through to get to the other side, and not minefield, asteroid field, asteroids are flying at them. But you have to, like, get to the other side and hope everything's okay. Never tell me the odds. And yet it's also sort of like the game of sorry. First you're way ahead. Then you get bumped way back. Where you think you're getting ahead and then to stick back to the beginning and start all over. But you do what you can do. So this time around, i got to really rethink things. And I'm um, going to pull back on some of my work, my stresses. Uh, we're selling my vacation rental house. There's a wonderful house here, a thousand acres. I'm selling some of my heavier camera items. I'm still going to do some work with Hot Springs Broadcast Network. If if somebody wants to um, get involved and do some editing and on-camera stuff, I have no ego about that. Um, I'm looking to pull back from that. I have so many neat, cool videos 
that I, I, I want to do coming up, and I still plan to do them, but it's got to be at a, a different pace, you know, because i got to rethink uh, just things. And I'm two of my three meals is like total juice from the in the raw food place so I'm doing every alternative that you can think of on top of uh, the regular medical protocol to get me back into remission you know um, it's such a serious disease that you couldn't just mess around with alternative stuff because you know one day you could be fine and five days later you could be hospitalized because it's just going through your body popping all the little blood vessels and making them bleed and and I've been at that point before and have to undo it. I'd rather treat it aggressively, right at, right at, right at bat. So I got some good, fun videos still planned coming up. I'm going to pull back a little bit. I'm still taking my uh, you know, professional jobs, but there's going to be a lot less of them. And I'm selling off, again, my heavier camera gear. Probably going to get some lighter stuff. Taking a new attitude because everything I need to really do now has to be focused including reducing stress on popping this uh, rare disease back into remission. And um, that's where I am.